Welcome back to the African bush. Um, I'm feeling as zen as can be. Just uh, gonna pop for some lunch in a minute, but thank you, Rassi Erasmus, for giving me something to do uh, as I sit here on the deck, just over <laughs> overlooking the bush, because this side has been dropped for South Africa for the game against Ireland this coming weekend, and experience is the watchword. What do you make of the South African team? How confident do you feel if you're South African or if you're Irish even, now you've seen it? How do you think this one is going down? Uh, I'm Tim, this is Egg Chasers, and if you appreciate the content on the channel, um, if you're enjoying the, the, the journey, my first ever journey to Africa, um, and you want to capture some of the uh, action, not just from the bush, but from the, well, certainly it's, I think it's going to be wild at Loftus Versfeld this weekend. Um, I'll be there in the Bryce and the, and the beer gardens and in the stadium, and of course, across all the rugby as it happens in these July tests. Hit subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, leave your comments down below. Most importantly, what do you make of the team? So 20 World Cup winners are in the match day 23. Tw uh, many of them are double World Cup winners. So much experience. And all 15 that are starting are from the Rugby World Cup squad from last October, November. That is serious levels of experience. It's exactly the same starting pack from the final, except for the positions where Changes have to be made due to an injury to Stephen Kitsoff, um, Ox and Shea, he'll do. In fact, let me get the team up so you can have a look. There you go, there it is. Pretty um, frightening levels of talent, isn't it? So yeah, Ox and Shea, he'll do as a backup to the injured Stephen Kitsoff. And Dwayne Vermeulen retired, now part of the coaching staff. And that's probably the most interesting selection in the whole 15, isn't it? A number eight, Quagga Smith getting the shot. He's been so good as an impact man for the last 20, 30 minutes of games, those battle stats off the charts and his impacts on games have been huge. Quite often players get pigeonholed in certain roles and I'm sure Quagga Smith, whilst he is happy to do his role for the team, and that's one thing you say about this South Africa team more than anything, is they all do the job for the team. And just because you're not starting doesn't mean you're not as important as the man who is starting. And whilst that is the case, there's, there, there's, there'll be some pride for Quacker Smith wanting to wear that eight jersey and be regarded as the number one and able to put in 60, 70, maybe even an 80 minute shift. Um, so it's really fascinating to watch that one. And where does this leave Evan Ruiz? That's a question because he was sort of being tipped as the, the heir to Dwayne Fumulin's throne. Possibly it was going to be Cameron Hanacom. And there were other contenders to come into the box back row, Elric Lowe, for example, but Quagga Smith is the boy. And it doesn't, well, at least for this test, isn't going to be the guy that's going to provide the impact from the bench. That's going to come from one of six forwards who are on the bench. A returning Marco van Staden, been injured for some time, but just got back playing for the Bulls. Probably the most surprising selection, uh, maybe in the whole team, is uh, Salman Murat on the bench. Two locks on the bench. I know Rassi Erasmus has done that before within a 6-2 split, but... Um, yeah, I was quite surprised to see that, particularly uh, you've got Eben Etzbeth on the, on the field. Um, I don't know, I suppose Franco Must Muster can play and has played and does play back row. So I, gu I guess that makes sense. But I don't know, tell me what you think. Do you think there are other people that possibly deserve a spot on the bench more than Salman Murat? That's the one I'm surprised about. Really happy for Gerhard Steenkamp. He's a big old boy and uh, on debut. Oh no, not on debut. He's had a couple of caps before, hasn't he? But anyway, he's, he's got a shot now with uh, Kitsoff out, one of the new breed that is coming through. And whilst there's a lot of experience, there are some very significant fresh faces in this box squad, particularly when you look at the bench. Is there a better combination that enables a 6-2 split than Grant Williams and Sasha Feinberg and Gomazulu? Exceptional. And um, yeah, they've also got, a, now they've got a, back, a, a kicker backing up Andre Pollard as well because that's the reason that Marnie Leboc has lost his spot again another player not in the 23 but it's been in the past they've had to have Cheslin Colby or Fafta Klerk kicking as the backup now they've got a really good goal kicker and a very very exciting prospect on the bench and between Grant Williams and Sasha they cover every single position on the park in the back line so that's um, that's good uh, what else uh, backline is exactly, by the way, the one that Joanne de Jong picked on the channel video from the other day. You can go and check that one out, hit subscribe, um, and then you don't miss a, a single bit. 
um, and Juan de Jong just went with yeah the experience, the guys from the World Cup, and no surprises there whatsoever. Um, yeah, again, we've seen in in that Chasing the Sun two documentary, you saw Marnie Leboc just take being dropped really well, and and do what do the job for the team. And I wonder if there'll be if South Africa win this one, will there be some churn from Test one to Test two? That's going to be quite interesting to watch as well. Haven't seen the Irish team yet, but just on the back line. I have not seen the Irish team yet. But based on what we expect it to be, and without Jameson Gibson Park and Hugo Keenan, I'm going to say there is not a single Irishman that I would pick ahead of his opposite number for South Africa. Which just speaks to how big a loss Jameson Gibson Park and Hugo Keenan are. They are irreplaceable. And the drop off, that's the biggest difference, the depth. When, when Ireland lose a player, the drop-off's big. When South Africa lose a player, they've got five more, just waiting to waiting to go. And so, I, yeah, I actually think Ireland are going to do all right up front. Um, and will but I think I think they could get, I think they could get, I think the beating of the team could actually be in the back line, strangely enough. Because, yeah, I don't think there's a single Irishman. And Gary Ringrose, part of that is that he's only just coming back and hasn't been, hasn't had lots of game time. And his opposite number, Jesse Creel, has been world-class during and since the Rugby World Cup. That's probably the best example of a guy taking an opportunity and making a shirt his own. You cannot imagine a box team right now without Jesse Creel. He's so important. And that midfield partnership with Damien Dialende, he's a weapon, Dialende, isn't he? So I, I would even pick him above Aki based on this season. Yeah, interesting. I think Ireland can live with South Africa up front. But I'll tell you what, right, they are going for it on this one, aren't they? They are absolutely going for it. Now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, seeing as I am in the bush, about to go for some lunch. But I have seen enough animals now on the game drives that I'm able to pick a bush pack, bush 15 pack. So these are only animals I've seen. I can only select ones that I've actually seen while I've been out on one of the drives, all sat here um, at the uh, Simbavati River Lodge, part on the Timbavati private game reserve. Um, loose head prop, hippo. Simple enough. I've changed my selection. It was a rhino, but now at Hooker, I'm going warthog. Seen a bit of warthog. Akka van der Merwe is nicknamed the angry warthog, and they are they are tough little nuggets. So yeah, I'm quite happy to flip the um, the Hooker position to a warthog. Tight head prop, elephant, anchor of the scrum. Franz Malerba, Tig Furlong, big old unit. Has to be elephant, doesn't it? Second row, what a combo this is. I saw uh, yesterday evening a Cape Buffalo. They are big old units and they're aggressive so that they fit the enforcer position. Evan Etzebeth, Joe McCarthy, they fit that role perfectly. Tough, tough animal. And um, apparently they, they, they don't fake charge. Like some animals will pretend to charge at you to get you to back off. If, if you see a buffalo charging, it's coming for you. And they, they, if they're on their own, they get skittish and they will do it without a second invite. So yeah. Number four, perfect. Number five, obviously, it's going to be a giraffe, isn't it? You're your lying out, man. No one's going to beat him in the air. Um, back row then. So as I'm in South Africa, I'm going with the, uh, the the South African six, which for the most of the rest of the world is the number seven, the open side flanker. I'm going for an African wild dog because they are scavengers. They will steal and they are tough. They are really tough. They're the best killer. Um, that the most successful killer in the bush. Quite rare to see as well, so I'm pretty chuffed I've seen an African wild dog. It's the one, it's the animal that the, um, most of the guides and trackers here, they like it the most because it's, um, it's rare and they, they just respect the animal because it is a, it's a tough, tough. So African wild dog at six, rhino at seven, because that is a defensive unit. When you think about your classic number seven or number six for the rest of the world, it's, it's built for defense. Peter Steph de Toy, Peter Romani, built for defense and the rhino built for defence and will smash you when it gets the chance. And uh, number eight had to be a lion, the dominator. Okay. <laughs> it's the circle of life. I've seen all those animals. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking about my, uh, my backs. I'll get back to you on the backs, but I'm quite happy with that as a pack. Tell me what you think in the comments down below. And of course, most importantly, on your Springbok team. Let me know.